do take your seats. If you'd like a Bible, someone from the Connect team will, um, will bring you one if you pop up your hands. Um, this evening, I was, I was looking forward to just being part of the congregation. And, um, and then Dave messaged me earlier on saying, I'm not feeling great. Um, could you bring a word? And it's like, okay, yeah. And I've listened to God, and um, I want to share something that he's placed on my heart in the last hour um, that I think is for us tonight. Um, the first week of February is a, a week that um, has special significance in history. It's the first week that um, Britain is out of Europe. Um, but it's not actually that that I want to talk about tonight. People are going, phew. Um, on the 7th of February 1980, I was born, um, and the world has changed as a result. Well, actually, that's really arrogant, isn't it? <laughs> but actually, I turned 40 on Friday, and I look back on the first 40 years, and I'm thinking, okay, God, wow, thank you for your faithfulness. What are you going to do different in the next 40 how can you use me to make a difference in this world? An even bigger impact. On the 5th of February, I don't know the date. 5th of February, Malcolm Duncan came to faith as he heard God calling him, come home, son. I can't remember when that was. But things have changed as a result of Malcolm coming to faith and God using that encounter. God seeking him out, bringing him to faith. On the 4th of February 1996, I was plunged under water and brought back up as I was baptised. My life was different. I was dead and now I am alive. And just in saying about baptism, I wonder how many of us here this evening or joining online have not yet followed Jesus' command to be baptised, to say, I am a new creation. My old life has gone and I now live with Jesus and for Jesus and because of Jesus. I'm just throwing that challenge and encouragement out there. On the 2nd of February, um, nine years after 1980, so in 1989, Dave Criddle was born. First week of February, significant week. Well, it, every week is significant. People born, people live and things like that. But we're still in the first week of Feb. And on the 9th of Feb, 2020, I wonder whether God wants to make it a significant time of encounter with people here. I want to read from 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, verse 11 uh, to 15. Where God seeks someone out, someone who is afraid and someone who has run away. And God meets um, Elijah who's been running uh, from, uh, from the people of Israel and um, the king. Um, and he, he, meets them, he meets them earlier on in chapter 19 uh, through an angel, provides food and rest um, on two occasions. And leads Elijah to a, uh, a, a mountain, Mount Horeb, which also is known as Mount Sinai quite often in the Old Testament. And in verse 9, we, we see uh, God saying to Elijah, what are you doing here? And it's that question <laughs> that we'll see repeated in a few verses time. And I want us to think about that. But I'll start at verse 11. God said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. This is the same mountain that Moses met God on in Exodus 33 and, and Exodus 34, where God's glory passes by. This is a place of encounter, a place where God meets with people and changes their future places their past in the past and changes their future. God doesn't just meet people on mountains. He meets people wherever they are. He seeks them out. And I think he's seeking us out this evening. 
to put our past in our past and make a difference in our future. Verse 11, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there is a great wind, a bit like today. So strong that they were splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. Verse 13. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I've been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they're seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness. And he, the, the narrative goes on. I want us to think about that question, the encounter, but that, that question that God asks, what are you doing here? Elijah is in the wrong place. He should be um, God's messenger to the people, linking the people with God and God with the people. That was uh, one of the tasks of, um, of, of an Old Testament prophet and priest. And he's run away. He's fearful. And he's run away from where he's meant to be. And God meets him there. He se seeks him out. He gives him rest in the early, early verses of chapter 19, and he provides for, for him exactly what he needs. He provides sustenance. He provides uh, refreshment, rebuilding him for the task that is ahead. And then he meets him again on the mountain. And Elijah gives a strange answer. It's an honest answer. He's there because he's run away. He's hiding. He's fearful. But he doesn't express a need. He doesn't say, God, I'm here because I know that you're here. He doesn't say, I've come because I need you, God. I need you to do something. I need you, I need to meet with you, and that's why I've come here. I need to meet with you because I need something to change in my future or in the future of Israel because, wow, it's a mess. He just moans, basically. He runs at, at fearful and he moans to God. I, I love um, the Chronicles of Narnia. And um, anyone else a Narnia, Narnian? Or, or Narnia fan, I should say, not a Narnian. Um, but then, yeah, well, I can tell there's a sparkle in some of your eyes. You've been to Narnia. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's an in, in joke if you haven't read the books um, or seen the films. Um, and in, in the latest film version of the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, there's a wonderful scene where Peter, Susan and Lucy, Mr and Mrs Beaver, they go to Aslan's camp. And uh, they've already seen Father Christmas, who's given them gifts um, that they need to do the roles that they have. And... Um, they go into the camp and they go to Aslan's tent. Aslan is uh, um, like God. Okay. And they go up to the tent and Aslan comes out of the tent. And um, Peter draws his sword and says, we've come to see Aslan. A powerful moment. Aslan comes out of the tent, everyone bows down. First thing that Peter then says, Aslan, I need your help. I need your help because my, my brother, he's gone off with a white witch. I need your help. And he goes to the only person that can help. The only person that can really make a difference in the future of Edmund's life. And he goes to that person because he needs, he needs, not just wants or thinks that it might help, thinks it might be a good thing to do, but he needs Aslan's help as he goes. Elijah needed an encounter with God. He needed God's help to do what God had asked him to do. 
Elijah needed a, a place of refreshing, a place of rebuilding, a place of, of re-envisioning, a place of repair. He needed that encounter with God. What are you doing here tonight? Is it out of habit? Do you come to church on a Sunday evening out of habit? Have you come this evening because, well, nothing else to do? Nothing good on TV? Or, yeah, I haven't been out today because it, it was raining and now it stopped raining, so I, I'll, I'll come out. Why have you come tonight? And I'm not saying that, that the other reasons are, aren't good reasons in terms of, well, I like to meet my friends or the coffee's good ish. No, it is good. It, it, it was great. Why, why do you come? What are you doing here? And it might be that you're seeking after God or an encounter with God in the noise, the exuberance of, of, of people around and kind of the, the loud praise and worship. That's not a bad thing. And you can meet God in that way. It might be that we're after a, a meeting with God in kind of the power and the um, miraculous kind of things. And God does that. And he can do that. And he can do that tonight. And seeking, being here for that is no bad thing. Moses went up the mountain to meet with God. And he said, show me your glory. And uh, shared about this yesterday in the leader's day. Show me your glory. And he needed a fresh encounter with God to lead the people. Elijah doesn't express that need, but clearly he does need that fresh encounter with God. Whether he finds God in the wind or earthquake or fire, or in, as he does, in silence and quiet. He needed to meet with God. Because when we meet with God, our lives are different. Our lives are changed for the future. I've got 40 years until I'm 80, 60 years until I'm 100. And I look ahead thinking, God, I want you to change me now. Not I want, I need you to change me now so I can see more fruit, more things of you doing stuff through my life and in my life in the next 60 years. I want to see the Holy Spirit break out in a powerful way that I, I've read about in books or I see in other places around the world, but I want to see it here. So I need to meet with you now to, for you to change me, God. For you to do things in me that I'm open to so that actually things change out there. But it might be that you need God because the things in your life are meaning that you, you don't know what to do. And you need that fresh encounter with God's Holy Spirit. To heal you, to refresh you, to, to bring a renewal. Or as Elijah had um, when he, he was running away, God met with him and gave him food to just keep him going. And it might be that tonight you need that. God to just place food from his Holy Spirit into you to keep you going. <coughs> what are you doing here tonight? As we encounter God, the living God, our lives and our futures will be impacted and changed. I believe that there are people here this evening that need to know that God has words of new hope for you. I believe that God is saying that the sun will rise and has already started to rise. There's a lady that needs to know the words of God just saying to, to her, I am here. I'm linked to the, the word that was shared at the very beginning. 
I believe Jesus is also saying that my light is an in inextinguishable light and I call you out of my darkness into glorious light. Be safe, my child, even as you walk in a dark place. My light is an in inextinguishable light. What are you doing here tonight? And what do you need God for? And what do you need God to do or to be this evening? We're going to um, have a time of silence. And then the group are going to come up and sing or lead us in singing the song, Hungry, I come to you, for I know that you satisfy me. Basically an expression of our need of God. I don't know what God will do in the rest of the evening. But I know that it's right for us to offer uh, prayer, prayer for people. And it's right for us to respond as individuals in the way that God leads us. I'm going to be sat here or kneeling here. There'll be people around there that can pray for you. If you want someone to pray with you, do, do come on over and we will pray for you. As God meets with you, he's seeking you out and asks you, what are you doing here? What do you need me for this evening or need me to be? Holy Spirit, help us to respond to what you're saying to us as individuals and us as a church. God, I thank you that when we encounter you, our present is changed, our past is put in the past and our future is impacted and not just our future but the future of those that you'll send us to i thank you for the narrative of elijah i thank you that you met with him you blessed him and you sent him back to do your work and i pray god that you will meet with us now and meet our needs in jesus